doing it live. We're doing it live. But in the top right, the Australian menace. It is spawning as Zerg Pig. And the bottom left. Is guitar cheese from US or Canada? It's one of the two. Um, but your North American Titan. Spawning as Protoss. Remember, this is random versus random. Neither player seems to be... Oh, they are telling their race. And I have fucked up the camera. So, that adds a little bit of an extra dynamic to it. Both of them comfortable with all of the races. Uh, and quite experienced as well. So we will have to see who comes out on top. There's that extra dynamic. I, I, I think they've agreed to tell their race right at the start. And it would be considered... At the very least, a major dick move to not do that. So we're gonna we're just gonna play it like a normal game. We're gonna we're just gonna go into it. And everybody's gonna be playing every race. We'll see who draws what in what matchups. But uh, we're just gonna assume there are no mind games at play here. So, all right. So Pig, it looks like is opting for that gas pool. This is sequencer. And if you don't opt for a quick probe scout, there's a chance you can actually sneak out the Zerglings before the first probe gets in. Uh, and it's very unlikely they're going to be trying to block your expansion just because of the distance. Now, it's not like a sort of early cheese where you're trying to go get a kill move on someone, but this is very safe. If they go for a cannon rush uh, or maybe like a two-gate pressure, you have access to a gas, you have access to a pool and Zergling speed, which gives you a lot of options against that. Sequencer, of course, has a lot of rocks and a lot of different attack paths and choke points and high grounds and low grounds. And I, I sound like I'm, de I'm describing every map, but look at the mini-map. So that kind of sums it up here. It looks like Guitar Cheese is just opting for the gate expand. He's walled off the front, which means this left-hand side with... It, it. There are rocks here, but it's pretty vulnerable to Zergling drop. You can actually get past the wall if you're a determined Zerg. I don't think Pig is going to opt for that. But that is one of the less defensible locations if the Zerg does decide to go for some sort of really heavy pressure. But it looks like, especially for this game number one, neither player is particularly interested in heavy early aggression in any sort of real attack. Instead, they've just established their basic tech. We have Warp Gate and an Adept on the way with a Twilight Council behind. And on the other side, Pig has his speed. He's still mining three in gas. That's something to point out. Is he going to add Overlord speed, or is this for a lair? That's my question. He's, he's opting for a third base, but is there a follow-up here? Uh, that pig is going to be going for. Because you don't just continue mining gas. You might be like, well, he just keeps in gas, he'll have it for later. No. That's a significant percentage of income he's invested into mining that Vespine gas, as opposed to more minerals to get bases quicker, to get more queens. He has to have some sort of plan with that, otherwise he's just putting himself behind needlessly. On the other side, it does look like Gitarchis is going to opt for the Adept Glaives to start. A very viable option. Uh, it forces out Zerglings or Roaches or just basic defenses out of a Zerg. And if they're a bit out of position, you can ransack a mineral line and just slice down a dozen drones without them even realizing what happened. All right, let's see. Pig has seen the Twilight Council. He's got a drop on the way. He still hasn't done anything with his gas yet, so I'm not sure where that's going. <clears throat> we'll find out soon enough. But you know that left hand? I saw a Dropper Lord, didn't I? Yeah, he started a Drop Lord over here. He just has a handful of Zerglings. This is just for scouting, but he's going to make use of this option to get behind the wall and get the information of whether Guitar Cheese is going for more tech. Is he going to have, say, seven more gates and a robo for a warp prism and charge lots? Uh, actually, I take it back. Pig opting for a few more Zerglings. He's going to take the elevator up the stairs here, uh, up to the high ground, and put, maybe try to put on a little pressure. Will he wait? Oh, he can just deny the third base. This works too. Not bad. And a Roach Warren is on the way behind. So he knows this is not a critical damage move. This is an annoyance that keeps Guitar Cheese at home. So he's just keeping a little bit of map control, a little bit of map presence and vision. Uh, and behind it, he has his actual defense coming up. He has his Roach Warren. He has access to his Evolution Chamber as well. But by the time the Adepts can actually move to the other side of the map, his Roach Warren is going to be up and running, and he should have at least half a dozen Roaches to shut down these Adepts before they can do any damage. There you go. Five Roaches in the production tab. Still no Lair. Uh, still no maybe fourth base or anything like that. I'm... Not sure if Pig is going to commit to just going for a bunch of roaches to put on pressure, or is he just playing defense? That's still up to him, uh, as he's a little supply blocked right now. All right. 
The lair is on the way, so a safety move. Just a very, a scouting overlord drop. There's literally no anti-air until this stalker. So it will finally get rid of it. He gets a little bit of extra scouting. He confirms the third base is being committed to and that the adepts are still at home. So Pig right now, on top of these initial roaches, he can afford to make more drones. He can afford to bolster his economy. He can afford to move into the mid-game very safely. But we will have to see. Guitar Cheese is building up a strong amount of adepts, but Pig does have sight of it. He's throwing shade across the map, but the creep is spread out. Pig is supply blocked right now. He can't build any additional units, and this is a lot of adepts. He has enough roaches to kill them, but he has to catch them first. That's the hardest part, as those adepts are slippery as a motherfucker. All right. He is making more overlords. He's not actually adding on any more roaches at the moment, so these adepts could get some damage done. Once again, it's not that they're going to kill the roaches. It's they're going to kill the drones while the roaches are taking their time to actually kill them. Um, but it appears Guitar Chi is not going to come in. He doesn't know the exact roach count or what's coming out of those eggs. So there's no reason to throw these adepts away into what could be an overwhelming force. Instead, he has them on the map, and Pig has to respect that. He has to sit back. He has to play defensive because he can't catch the adepts without roach speed. Uh, he can't go across the map. So as long as he sits back, he can defend. But if he moves out, his mineral lines are gone. All right, Pig actually opting. The expansion patterns are very interesting as well. Guitar Cheese has opted for this left side base, which is much safer behind the rocks on the high ground, but only has access to one gas geyser. He's kind of adapted that. He's going up to, what is this, 10 gates? 10 gates here and a warp prism? Is there blink behind? No, this is, he's still just making adepts. Are you, we'll have to see if Pig can adapt to the situation. As this is, okay, now we're getting to the point of danger here. You don't expect, what is this? How many? Where's the fucking units tab? 25 adepts coming up. Those can kill roaches. Especially with another round. He's warping in more adepts. The roaches do not have speed. They don't have anything to back them up. He can fight these roaches. He's throwing shade right on top, and he needs to get on top before more reinforcements come out. He's going for the overwhelming force, and he's right on top of everything. He lands right in the middle. He's actually trapping some of the roaches in. More shades are coming up. The warp prism moving up for extra aggression. It's 119 to 117 supply with roach speed still many seconds out. He's splitting up the adepts. There's not enough roaches really to do critical damage on either side. These adepts are continuing to shade into mineral lines. Drones have gone down so far. He's taken out the spine crawler. We do see guitar cheese. Trying to hold on. Well, actually, the guitar cheese is the Protoss. I'm so used to him playing Zerg. This is going to get confusing. I'm going to start going full tasteless and just being like Protoss and Zerg. But Pig is still holding on. His roach count is coming together. He's finished speed. These adepts not really doing what they needed to do. The workers are down to 56 versus 51, so that means Pig did get a little bit greedy earlier on. But he's starting to build up a roach count. 12 versus what? That's still 26 adepts. And Pig is struggling to defend it. Look for a second like he might hold on. But suddenly the overwhelming tide is washing over all of his mineral lines except for the fourth base. A few Ravagers being morphed, but that's another half dozen, actually nine more adepts. More in the main. He's going to take down the spawn crawler. The trickle of reinforcements is not going to be enough to stop the flood of adepts. As Pig is dropping a 95 supply, his worker count about to even up. He's... Starting, I mean, I keep saying he's holding on, but these adepts just keep slicing through. The glaives are not resonating with anyone but Guitar Cheese today. Some more adepts shade through. The last untouched mining base is now under fire. Another massive warp in, and I think that's going to be it. Two Gs are in the near future here, and Guitar Cheese looks like he's going to take game number one of this match. Okay, before I go any further, I want to make sure I have the sponsor name correct. I believe it's called Psionic Aftermath, uh, the sponsor of this. If someone could get me more information while we, of course, hashtag do it live. Does he have charge now? He doesn't have charge now. I think this was a little bit before the charge buff. I'm not sure of that. Um, for putting on this event. Pig, of course, uh, in his subscriber replay pack, provided the replays uh, so we could all enjoy them. 33 drones have gone down, and right now Pig is, uh, he's down, and he's out. Like, this game is over. It's ended. Um, if I put this on YouTube, I'll have a link below as well. But, yeah, he's super dead. It does seem this, this build took him off guard. Pig, I don't think factored in. When you take this third base, you don't have access to as much gas, so... 
if you focus a little bit more on the minerals, you might be able to hit that overwhelming force. And he went for the Adepts, too. Like, he just went straight for the Adepts. Most Zerg players do expect the transition, but if you just keep the transition in, from a lot of Adepts into a fuckload more Adepts was critical here. Uh, I'm not sure. Pig is still in the game. Maybe trying to collect himself a little as we go into the next match, but GGWP is going to be thrown out. And Guitar Cheese, with that strong timing, I'm not going to... I. I mean, I guess you could call it a cheese. Now, the difference between a cheese and a timing or an all-in, a cheese loses a significant amount of its strength uh, if it's scouted. Like, if, if Pig had gone in, seen 10 gates, no gas at the third, well, then maybe he starts making roaches and spawn crawlers earlier. So I would call it a cheese in the sense that if Pig had gotten that information or if he had a production tab hack or something, it would be pretty damn easy to stop the first wave of adepts and then stop anything after that. And all-in is more like an immortal timing or something like that, where even if you know it's coming, you still have to prepare well and set everything up. Um, but mass adepts are definitely something that most players aren't expecting, uh, and obviously Pig wasn't. But if he was, he could have shut it down. He didn't, though. So we're going to be going into game number two with Guitar Cheese up 1-0. to zero. Let me get some background music for between uh, these things. As we go to a short intermission... Oh, God. Going into game number two. Of course, it's random. Like... Pig could be Zerg all nine games. Guitar Cheese could be Protoss all nine games. He, it, it's exceedingly unlikely, but it's not impossible. All right, as we're loading in the game, number two. An Ascension to Ire. Make sure I have the score thingy correct. And we've got a mix up here. Well, actually, we're going to switch the nameplates. Professional. All right. Let's get into it. As they tell their races. In the bottom right, it is going down in game number one, but definitely something you can prevent from happening again. It's not like Guitar Cheese just outplayed him at every turn. He just made the good play. Pig was not in position to scout or defend it. He came out on top. But this time, spawning as Protoss, it is Pig. In the top left. It is. From Psy, Psy X. Is that different than Psy Storm Gaming? There's a lot of psi related activities in StarCraft. It is Guitar Cheese spawning as the Terran. We'll have to see. A Protoss versus Terran is definitely very different. And Guitar Cheese is now the Terran. This is just going to be hard to follow throughout the entire thing. I'm not even going to try to keep track. We'll just go one game at a time. Just take it one game at a time. But Protoss versus Terran is. Uh, a significantly different matchup than pretty much any match involving Zerg. Uh, a lot like Terran versus Terran, uh, it, it involves a lot of technical play early on. There are brute force attacks you can do. There are things like sending a probe out to do sneaky things that Pig is doing. But a lot of the early and mid game rely on the use of very strong units as opposed to a lot of smaller units uh, like Marines, for example. You look at things like Cyclones, like Widowmine Drops, Liberators on the other side. you got Stargate Phoenix uh, with Oracles as well. Um, and everybody's trying to maximize what little units they're making. Of course, speaking of maximizing, it looks like Pig, instead of even opting for a Nexus, 
Already has a pylon on the other side. He's got double gas at home. Guitar Cheese, unfortunately, is not going to be scouting before the Reaper. He's not going to have any information that this is happening. If he did, this is another one of those situations where if he had the element of surprise, it would be that much more effective. Or, I mean, not the element of surprise. If he didn't have it, it would be less effective. If you see what he's doing, you can stop it. All right, fun fact. I really... That was, that was profound. But the Reaper is coming out. It will figure out there is something up. But he can't have confirmation as to whether it is a, uh, a Stargate, maybe a proxy robo, or even something like a Dark Shrine. Uh, he'll, he'll probably suspect the Stargate, but he can't know for sure once he sees this Nexus is not here. All right. The Reaper actually comes in. The Mothership Core is moving out. The Adept will come back and shade to defend. The Reaper gets a few free kills. Guitar Cheese has to know what's up now. He wants to finish this command center at all costs. You finish this command center. That's first priority. Second priority is trying to determine exactly what he's dealing with. He's confirming there's no expo. It's not like you're not Terran. You can't lift your Nexus over as fun as that would be. But a probe is coming up. It looks like he's going to go for a pylon rush as partially damage and partially a decoy. I mean, obviously he wants to do the pylon rush, but more importantly, he wants this Oracle to get in and gut the mineral line. He just wants to melt it while everything's focused at the front. And hopefully he can break through the depots and supply block and kill units as well. We'll see if that happens. But he does have an Oracle on the way and three pylons at the front. And he so shows no signs of stopping anytime soon. Are there any more gays? He can't really afford too much more. He has to make sure these pylons continue adding on. And unfortunately for Guitar Cheese, he's in a position where his reactor is under direct fire. He will be losing it. Here comes the Oracle into the main base. SCVs are going down so far. Guitar Chi is not reacting. Five SCV kills. That's not critical damage yet. The Orbital will move up. He's got a lot of Marines. He's targeting down the Oracle. Almost loses it. Losing that would turn the tides for sure. Can he? Does a Cyclone outrange a Pylon Cannon? I didn't think that was the case, but maybe he just really wants that. Well, he's realizing now, and he kills the Cyclone with the last shot of the Cannon. That's a big kill right there. Okay, let, let's repair this depot. Another Oracle's coming in, and without that Cyclone, he can be kited very easily. Oh, Oracle doing its best to slice in. Getting a few more kills. Here comes another clone. If he had two lock-ons, this Oracle's dead. Without it, not even close, baby. Four HP and a dream. So this means with the workers killed, Pig has a chance. Yeah, beautiful scan. Gets a, gets a beat on the Axe Bell. There's still two Oracles on the field. He lost a Cyclone. Which means pretty much right now, Guitar Cheese, not only did he lose his economy, but he doesn't really have the tools to put together and go attack. Mm -hmm. yeah. If these two oracles are still going around, especially if you don't even have turrets yet, you can't just pick up and go. In fact, you can't pick up and go because you don't have a starport finished and you can't even make a medevac. That's a little bit more literal. Killing neither of these oracles. That's going to put Pig in a very comfortable position. Even though he only has a handful of units, the the, the travel distance between one side and the other, uh, and just the sheer amount of units that he can put together defensively with overcharge means at this point, Guitar Cheese just has to kind of bite the bullet, cut his losses, and try to get his economy to a reasonable position. He will move out, but I, I guarantee you he's not feeling like this is a game-ending move right here. He sees the Oracles are going into the main. The Oracles will see that two more Cyclones are on the way. Now that is a commitment. 200 more. Ooh. Miss Micro out of pick. Losing one of those Oracles, which means he's not going to have a revelation. So that will cut into things here. Five Cyclones are very scary. Three Cyclones with a Void Ray here and a few units and an Overcharge. Okay. Five Cyclones. Okay. Now we got a Storm Warning. He's going to have a Guardian Shield, which severely reduces the damage of the Cyclones as well, because it fires very quickly, but for very low damage. So a Guardian Shield acts as a massive, well, I guess, fucking shield, uh, just reducing each one of those attacks by two. So that's a significant part of this defense. And I like this choice. Uh, Guitar knowing, knowing that he has the units to put on a strong attack, but there's no way he can put together a Bio Force, just goes for the third command center. If he went for two or three more barracks here, by the time he got stim, combat shields, and a reasonable amount of bio, Pig would already have the defenses. So you might as well go for the economy and rely on these strong units for map control. 
as opposed to trying to commit to something that pig is already going to have plenty of preparation for by the time it can actually hit. But here we go. Five Cyclones now. There are a couple sentries here. I don't believe there are any Guardian Shield. Okay, there's one Guardian Shield coming up. Of course, he has Force Fields as well. If he can cut off those Cyclones, that'll be great for him. But Pig has committed to five Gates. He's gotten Adept Glaives. And a War Prism is on the way. And I would reckon, uh, I, would, I would venture to guess that he does not have uh, passive intentions. A War Prism, the Glaives, the plus one, and this many Gates on two bases means he wants to attack. And Guitar Cheese is... Con He's actually going into mech here, so we'll see if he can mech it happen, but Cyclones are a very early game unit. They drop off as time goes on. They don't do very much damage against non-armored units, for example, Adepts. So unless he can cut off this army in a good position, it could be overwhelming force. It does have plus one, it does have glaives, uh, and he does have sentries for guardian shield, but that's actually a lot of Cyclones. <laughs> you don't usually see this is an un unexpected amount of cyclones of course force fields cyclones much like your mother have a very large hitbox so they can be cut off by force fields pretty easily uh you just land them in the right spot and suddenly half your army is stuck back we'll have to see pig is a little bit down on supply guitar has gone for a third base as well we have the factories coming up he's building hellions he knows he needs a little bit of a buffer here to deal with those adepts. He's starting to realize he's dealing with a more adept-based army. Uh, disruptors on the other side are the choice for Pig, and they're very good uh, as they they do one-shot Hellbats and Hellions, and they take a big chunk out of Cyclones, which can't move away very quickly either. So, we will have to see. These are armies you don't see battling it out very often. We have Mech Heavy Cyclone Terran against Mass Adept into Disruptor after a Proxy Oracle. He's just fighting it out. That Void Ray in the back not being targeted onto the Cyclone, so a bit of a missed opportunity there. The the Medivac doesn't really do much besides offer some maybe micro potential, so losing it isn't a huge deal. But the Adepts are on the chase. He's got two more Medivacs, but does he even have an armory for Hellbats? So I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what the Medivacs are going to accomplish here. Uh, Liberators would have been a much stronger choice just to be able to zone out some of these Adepts and Stalkers. So it looks like Pig going to have a lot. The boys are pulled. 10 SCVs will go down, but they'll take a lot of damage. He throws shade onto this army. The Medivacs just kind of sauntering around in the air, not really sure what they're going to accomplish. And suddenly Pig, with what seems to be a significantly superior army composition, he just put the right pieces in place to deal with what Guitar Cheese was building. And now the Cyclone's really showing how weak they are as time goes on. They're just such a clunky unit uh, in high numbers. Now... It does look like he will hold on. It does look like he will drive this Protoss army back, but now there are shades into each base, and we have to ask, at what cost? 33 SCVs have gone down, leaving him with under 20 now. It does, well, the third command center was not killed, but Pig is everywhere at once, and these Cyclones just don't do enough damage. They don't have plus one, uh, and the Glaive Adepts are just ripping through the mineral lines. This is, this is looking like Game 2 is going to be going to our Australian champion and tying up the Series 1-1. We even got some disruptors thrown in the mix. Big hit right into the center mass, and another one coming out. All right. There it goes. And that's going to tie our Series up at 1-1. One to one. I think that game, I think the choice to continue going for Cyclones was a little bit I think just transitioning into bio would have been a better move. Uh, just sit back, maybe make a, a couple Widow Mines and hold on. Now, I think he was trying to catch Pig off guard just with his army. Like if Pig had gone for Blink Stalkers or Immortals or something, then the Cyclones are good. But Pig actually opted for the Adept Glaive. So it looks like two games in a row. Adepts with Glaives will take it home. But uh, let's go to game number three. In this best of nine, first to five. Where can I get this replay pack? This is, uh, if you are subscribed to Pig, that's where I got it from. Um, I'm subscribed to Pig, of course. The best, or is he, random player on the Americas server. So we'll see. Um, but yeah. We're going to find out by the end of this series. That's what we're trying to determine right now.
jump in to game number three. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the cast so far. to jump in. Let's make sure they're on the right side, yeah. It is now one to one tied up. And let's get into it. We have another matchup. Well, actually, we have the same matchup from game number one. I take it back. So let's let's introduce. I'm not usually a huge fan of doing introductions, especially for not live games. But I think it's important because it is a random versus random match. So you never know which player is playing which race. Just helps to kind of remember in each one because you got to reset every time. But in the bottom left of Defender's Landing, it is Pig. Spawning a Zerg. And in the top right, it is once again as a Protoss player, Guitar Cheese from America. Right. So Pig is actually opting once again for a pool gas, a very safe opener. And remember, we're on Defender's Landing, which is, uh, what's a nice way to put it? Um, it's the most fucky of maps in the current map pool. It, is, it has the smallest rush distance. There's a, a weirdly set up natural that's kind of uncomfortable for a Protoss player to wall off. But you do have access to collapsible rocks to take this down early on. So we've seen a lot of uh, unique builds and cheeses and all-ins and uh, just different plays, which, uh, depending on who you ask, would be good or bad. But it is fact. As we're spawning into game number three. All right, we'll see if Pig continues over 100 gas. This is going to be for circling speed, most likely. There are some good locations to pull off an Overlord drop. It is pretty far away from being cut off by Adepts or anything like that, so I wouldn't be surprised to see an Overlord drop scout or just a light pressure. But it does look like, once again, neither player opting for some sort of one base play. They're not getting too crazy early on. Instead... They're going to sit back and kind of take take uh, a little bit of a look at what their opponent is doing. Pig is going to get a get a look at the wall in the front. He's going to know he's walling off on the kind of inside area here. I assume this first adept is going to be sent across the map to put on a little bit of pressure. Uh, and also get a full scout of, are you taking three bases? Are you getting circling speed? Are you making a bunch of lings? All the things he needs to worry about early on. So, we will see. A second pylon has been made in the main. I can only assume this is a drop defense pylon. Uh, it is in range of the Nexus, so that makes it a super pylon, able to warp in three times as quick. A little bit of micro out of either side there. I don't think any probes were lost. Nope. He kills the Zerglings, but a little bit of lost mining time. That doesn't really matter. And, of course, he'll probably make his tech up here as well. Looks like Pig sticking to his guns. He is going for a third base. He's got 12. Make that... He's got a good group of Zerglings on the way. I'm not sure the exact number, but it's in double digits. He's not going all in, but he definitely has enough to take out an Adept or two. And possibly pressure into the main with a drop, and it looks like that might be the direction he is indeed going. There's an Evolution Chamber to open up that tech path. All right, and a different direction here, the Stargate. A lot of Zerglings will run by all the way into the main. There was only one Adept created. The Overcharge has already been popped, which means there's not too much time to be able to deal with this. He should lose at least a couple probes. It comes down to the micro, but the mining time is already lost as well. He's drilling the probes in together. He gets a good surround, and there is the scout on the Stargate as well. So five probes will go down. He gets a full scout of the base and an Overcharge. So that's definitely a win there for Pig. He doesn't need to be microing every individual Zergling. Instead, just making sure he has the information and then preparing a follow-up is the most important thing. We do have a dropper lord for a, a follow-up pressure. 
He knows there aren't that many gates. He can't just warp in three adepts to shut it down. One adept won't cut it. And if the mothership core is not in position, he can snipe the pylon, making an oracle right now as well. So pick going for those little plays that turn into big wins if enough time goes on. Ooh. He's actually hard walling off this side as Guitar Cheese. He's completely cutting off his base from everything except exactly what Pig is doing. So unfortunately for him, while he may think he is safe, instead he is the opposite. As the drop comes into the main, are there... Yeah, there is a Spore Crawler, but there's not too much at the third base. A few drones should go down. And that will be a mild casualty, but let's see what's going to happen on the other side. He can't be losing the Oracle either. The drop comes in. He's going to go straight for the mineral line. A second oracle is on the way. Good reaction time, but that's not going to stop at least a few probes from going down. Two more, three more. And he uses some energy and picks up another probe there. So Guitarchi is just in a kind of an uncomfortable situation, especially considering he has nothing that can actually kill a goddamn overlord. Alaire is on the way, and Pig is probably going to be feeling pretty good about the situation. If he's looked closely, he has, uh, he has realized... That his opponent is hard walled off on two bases. He's only got two gates and a star gate. So, what can. The more you look. What can the Guitar Cheese really do here? He can't take a third. He, he doesn't really have that many probes. Okay, well, of all the options, that's probably the best one. He's, he's limited himself to two bases here. So, the only real option is take the path you're already going down and try to go a little bit faster. So double Stargate, the best of a not great situation. I'm not going to say bad. He's not out of it yet. The Oracles could still get a lot of damage. Maybe do some Stasis Ward play as well. That could make the difference. But um, it's it's not great. All right, picking off Queen. That's a little bit of something-something. Another Queen, a bit sloppy there. Pig with no creep, really, between his main and his gnat. So the makings of something here. He's going to, well, that's not what you want. So that kind of evens out there. You don't want to lose any of these oracles. But two more oracles on... Okay, he's doubling down. <laughs> he's doubling down. Another Stargate as well. He's going for two more oracles. He's not going just for two oracles. He's not going for four oracles. He's going for more oracles. And honestly, if Pig doesn't scout this, and there's no reason he would necessarily... Because this Phoenix has taken out any close overlords. He's removing a lot of scouting options, and... Pig is not committing to an Overseer or anything. He might think this is a bunch of gates. Oh, this isn't a hard wall. I'm an idiot. Well, he still has a take and a third, so my point stands. Nobody saw that. Nobody... No, look away. Look, look at the oracles. Three at a time. <laughs> Maybe he... Uh, no, I think I just fucked up on that. Anyways, he does see the upgrade on the way. He does see a Twilight Council, but he does not see the Oracle Count growing in the main base. More gates. This isn't all in. They're, make no mistake about it. Guitar Cheese is looking for another timing. That's going to be very adept heavy. There are no Hydralisks here. And Hydralisks actually pretty suck pretty hard against Oracles as well. They get melted in just a few pulses. So... Just really queens are the best defense because they don't die very quickly and they have transfuse to keep them up while they're doing their damage and have a lot of range. But we'll have to see. Pig is going for Roach Hydra, but if the Oracle count is too high, everything will just melt. He's flying over. You have a revelation on that. He had a revelation on it and he flew over the lane. Oh, no. Now Pig knows. He had to have seen that. Oh, you can see the leg is there. That could be that could be a difference maker. He has a lot of oracles going towards the main. Are the queens making their way back? Indeed they are. Can he hold the main base, though? Will he just lose it? He could target down the lair. He could just... There goes the... There goes a hydra. To... Uh, is he just gonna... Just gonna kill the lair? The queens are trying to come back. They struggled on the low ground for a little bit. He's just gonna... Can he just go kill the queens? Oh my god! They're melting him! No more transfuses, but he will save the main base and kill a couple oracles, so that's it's not over yet. And Pig does have a fourth. He's only at 50 drones. He lost several there. He has to make more spores as well. There's an infestation pit. The, uh... Potential fungals 
are actually an incredible choice. There's nothing that can even... I mean, a revelation we'll see, Infestors. I think this game will end before Infestors even try to come out. 13 more drones were made here by Pig. Just this moment. He doesn't have upgrades yet. The Oracles are melting through the shades right on top. Suddenly, he sliced through the front lines. Down goes a Spore Crawler. The Roaches aren't going to stand up too tall either. The Queens are coming down from the main in a desperate bid to defend. There's a lot of Spore Crawlers adding their damage. The Adept Count and the Oracle Count and Energy are all starting to thin out. Some reinforcements are coming through. 113 to 111 supply. There are two Queens in the back. He's shading away. The Roach Count is thinning out. We do see a lot of shades onto the third base. Roaches and Hydras are popping out. He's trying to hold on, and remember, there's no follow-up to this. He doesn't have a third. He's running out of minerals in his main. Guitar Cheese needs to get damage now, and he needs to get it as quickly as possible. The drones are shading by. We see three more going into the main. They do have plus one. We'll shred a single Hydra, but they need to get more than that. As Pig still has four bases, he still has Roach Hydra. He's going to have one one upgrades, and he's going to have access to plenty of larvae to overwhelm these forces. Yeah, three Void Rays are on the way, but Void Ray is not an incredible counter to Queens and Hydralis because Queens have approximately 75 range and Hydralis don't have too much less. This Roach Hydra Force, not always that great of a unit composition, but this is the time for it to shine as it can outlast the Oracle Energy and it can kite away from the Adepts. This is the one last dive, but it looks like in the, in the game of sinking or swimming here, it's going to be the latter. The Spore Crawler is getting mad value. Will he actually... Wait, I, I, I take it back for a second. The Spore Crawler really helping out. He can target it down. He's got a lot more Hydras on the way. I, I think while Guitar Cheese might win this battle momentarily, he's going to lose the war. As Pig just has too much economy. He's got too much access to his bases. He's got too many reinforcements. And I think he's going to be going up two to one as the Transfusers come in. And there it goes. He'll tap it out. And this time, Pig gets the better of Guitar Cheese. In Zerg versus Protoss. Not a bad call with the Mass Oracle. I know as a Zerg player, that's such a pain to deal with. You don't think it's going to work, and then it does, and then you feel like uh, opening up the Battle.net forums, but then you realize you're not that much of a masochist. So, big holding on there. I think Guitar Cheese, if, if, he, yeah, if he was a little bit more decisive with his Oracles, he might have been able to cut through. There were also Zerglings coming into the base at the end, I guess, but uh, they don't look like they killed anything. But good hold by Pig. We'll put him up two to one. All right. Also, Krabby, for the commands that like YouTube and stuff like that, I'm just going to leave him on Nightbot. So that way, if Loopy ever has a seizure, then uh, we still have him uh, saved somewhere else. Just the important ones. Oh, God. That needs to be smaller. That needs to be smaller. We go to game number four. I, 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 I could go smaller. Alright, where is that folder? And there's best of nine. Best of nine, of course, means first of five. That should be the best of nine. And we're on Abyssal Reef. We're going under the sea. All right. And Pig is up two to one. Going into it. Of course, we don't know what races they're going to be. Neither do they until they load into the match, unless they are in tune with the random gods like myself. But let's go ahead and introduce once again. In the bottom right, it is once again spawning as Protoss, as he was in game number two, Pig. And in the top left, in also a reenactment of the second match, it is from Cyax Guitarchis. I like when you get Zerg, he says. Especially not on... Well, I think we can all agree. <laughs> uh, remember, both these players are Zerg mains. As well. So they may they may hold a little bit of resentment for the other races. Um, just a little. 
for all the things they have died to in the past, but of course they're both Grandmaster as Terran and Protoss as well. Alright. We will see. It does look like, once again, well this time, Pig, is he going to send a, a probe? The, the last Protoss versus Terran started with a proxy oracle. Um, and that really kind of set the tone. Of course, it didn't kill Guitar Cheese, but uh, it did the damage, and it put him into a very uncomfortable position where he had to end up making some weird mech composition and ended up uh, dying overall. But this time, it does look like Pig going off for the gate expand with a pretty early probe scout. No SCV scout out of Guitar, uh, even to check for a proxy. So I think, uh, I think he's calling Pig's potential bluff here. He's just going to go for the Reaper. This is a map that's a little bit easier to defend as well. The distance is a bit shorter, but you have the ramp uh, in order to defend your second base and, of course, your main as well. The probe gets a scout. That is an expansion, obviously. And nothing out of the ordinary. So, sin since we're going to have a little bit of a longer game, well, not necessarily longer, but a more advanced game with more tech and more decisions... Uh, we can talk a little bit more about Protoss versus Terran. Uh, first, from the Protoss perspective, especially if you're going for a gate expand, it kind of comes down to your initial tech, tech choice. There are two big ones, Robo and Stargate. Robo indicates you probably want to go for either Colossi, sometimes Disruptors, but usually Colossi, and kind of just play defensive up to a third base. Your aggressive options pretty much only include a Warp Prism, early on and then maybe a little bit of blank harass or something like that but it's usually it's usually just a straight up turtle to colossi he's choosing the secondary option the stargate the stargate is much more aggressive much more in your face it's both stronger aggressively it can take advantage of opportunities that a terran player potentially gives you and all this is a bit of a mistake here uh letting the reaper get in but he should only lose one probe here will he lose the reaper as well but the downside of the Stargate is it's also dependent on, on taking advantage of opportunities. If you make mistakes, just like you can take advantage, you can get behind. Like you lose an Oracle or two, you lose some Phoenixes, uh, you, you get supply blocked and you don't quite get enough Adepts out, you can just get run over. Colossi are much more stable when it comes to playing safe, whereas uh, Stargate and then Phoenix uh, Adept follow-up... Uh, uh, uh as I struggle to get the best words out. But Phoenix Adept just really needs to be more active. Um, and speaking of active, these probes, they're not paying you to take breaks, okay? You're robots. I Literally bronze. Literally, okay. Two Adepts are coming up. Is there an Oracle on the way? It did just finish, right? Yeah, an Oracle on the way. Will there be a second Oracle follow-up? That is usually the case to make sure you have detection against Widowmon drops. He scouts and sees the Marines as well. Guitar Cheese opting for that reactor first. Pretty deep in the paint is Pig here with his Adepts. He should get a couple kills, but the turret is already up. And, eh. Also, I'm not sure that's where he wanted to go with this Adept either. Maybe he was trying to bait out the Widowmine shot, but... So Guitarchi's just kind of shutting down any early pressure there. The Oracle has slipped around the back. It might be able to delay some of this production. Yeah, he, he delays the Starport, which helps. But not much more to be gotten here. So Pig, he's taking a third base, but he's doing it without very much to back him up. He hasn't made a second oracle. Am I right about that? Yeah, he has one. O all of his units include one oracle right now. So he has a mothership core and an oracle. Literally nothing else. Looks like the oracle tried to come in. It do did delay a little bit more production. Killed four SCVs, but still. Literally no units. If these marines just come in here and kill this pylon, and I think they will. The overcharge is going to be too late. Guitarchi's... He'll take out that pylon. Pig is now supply blocks. He can't warp in any units. There are no more pylons. It's a disaster. It's a huge mistake. He's going to lose so many probes. Maybe the Mothership Core as well. Don't worry, Guitar Cheese was kind enough to free up some supply in the form of probes there. He does have to retreat. There are more pylons on the way. The preemptive overcharge. There are no more charges. He's got no more charges, boys. As the Marines continue to micro back nine probes so far. Make that an even 10, 11. Can we go for a dozen? That's 12. B 
before these Marines are taken out. So just some build order miscalculations here out of Pig, and Guitar Cheese jumps on that opportunity. That was just that was just a downright mistake. You need units, simply enough. He didn't have his Mothership Corps quite in position. He was focusing on the Oracle on the other side, trying to maximize, like I said, you try to maximize the damage of your Stargate units, and then you can't afford to make mistakes. He made a mistake, and now that cost him 12 probes, and he's actually even with a Terran player on Worker Supply. The Oracle comes in again. He needs to keep this alive as well for potential revelations. And he is opting for a Robotics Bay, which is a big tech jump. And Pig has finished his third. I'm not sure if Guitar Cheese knows about that. If he goes for Disruptors or even Disruptor Drop, that could be a very bold move to bring him back in the game. If he goes for Colossi, that's a little bit riskier, but could pay off later on. So we'll have to see what the first unit out... Yeah, he's making an Immortal. Will he opt for Extended Thermal Lance? We're going to have to see a decision here soon. He does get a Colossus or Colossi. People always get fucking annoyed at the English language whenever I, I struggle. Um, the Colossuses will help him out significantly. The Colossin. There you go. And a Twilight Council is on the way. That reminds me, no Forge yet out of Pig, which means his upgrades, especially if he's going for heavy ground units, are going to be lacking. Guitar Cheese already has the plus one. He has Medivacs on the way. He's going for the plus one armor. So I I'm really liking Guitar Cheese's position, even though the supplies are even. So we will see. But right now, Pig is just trying to put together an army to hold on, whereas Guitar Cheese is in a position to do significant damage. He does have Stim as well. He Stims in. That one Kaloxin might be enough to turn the tides. There are Guardian Shields here as well. That, that should hold this off for a little while, but the Medivacs are going to make this much more difficult. Nice bait on that Widowmine. And a big Stim is going to put these units deep into the orange. Where's the Colossi? The Colossi now moving into the fray. But the Nexus will be the casualty. He's remaking one, but Guitarchi is starting to cement his grip on this game so far. Pig just hasn't been able to put the pieces of the puzzle together before Guitarchi's hit him in the, all the wrong places. It's now 117 to 93 supply, 57 workers for our Terran player to 51 of Protoss. Three bases really to two. Extended Thermal Lance is only halfway done. I don't even think he has a forge. So the upgrades are only going to get worse. And... This, this is going to look like a potential killing blow here. If he does have enough Colossa and Force Fields, he can delay it, but then the drops start becoming a major threat. Alright, we will have to see. The Oracle tries to come in. It finds something, and he needed something. Will he finish that turret there? He could just finish the turret. It looks like the SCV's um, very intimidated by one Oracle, and Cannot, those are very hazardous working conditions, and they're going on strike. So we lo will lose six here. But the issue is, of course, yeah, more adepts coming in. Pig making some good plays. In a great position, Guitarchi is not really paying attention, but... Some SCVs go down, but he still has this ridiculously difficult army to deal with. Extended Thermal Lance finishes for what is now two Colossi, but he has almost nothing in front. I believe there is an observer up here. But Pig is still struggling to mine, and he only has 49 probes as well. Honestly, yeah, he's making Vikings now as Guitar Cheese. The supply, 149 to 108. This position is really hard to attack in a Colossi, but uh, at some point he can just bring the hammer down and uh, just run into them. The continued stream of Terran units parades across the map. 2-2 two, two is on the way. The worker count is game-endingly high. The Marauders just uh, soak up those extended thermal lances like a tanning bed. And it's just looking... It's going from bad to worse for Pig here. As Guitar Cheese continues to compound his position. A nice disruptor! Big hit! Oh! The Dream Ruptor! That was a game-changer! That, he, will he be able to hold on for now? The upgrades are not high enough. The supplies are evening up. The Dream Ruptor Pig! Grass potential victory from the jaws of defeat. Oh. That he needed everything that this Ruptor had to give him. And it gave it all he's got. 
three disruptors now, two at a time are being, and some widow mines are gonna go down. We got a game on our hands again. That is. Pig holds on. Now it's still gonna be two two. There's still gonna be a lot of Vikings, but now he does need to micro against these disruptor hits. All right. So guitar cheese, he'd been laying on the gas pedal for most of this game since that early aggression, but suddenly he just went into a head-on collision with a disruptor. And now it's a toss-up, puns intended. It's still 2-2. If Guitar Cheese avoids the shots at least somewhat well, his units are going to be ridiculously cost-effective. He has Medivacs, he has Vikings. All he needs to do is not lose almost his entire army to disruptor hits. I, I wonder if I'm foreshadowing here. I don't think I am. I think he's, now that he's seen the threat, he can prepare for it, but we'll find out. All right, Pig is coming up. That's so many Vikings. There's, oh. He shaves off one. Another shot coming out. Can he target it down? He can at the last second. Pig, maybe one more Hail Mary in the bank. No, he's already fired a shot. And Guitar Cheese rampages across the map. He's lost his third base, but it does seem like right now Pig is looking to lose most of the game. The shot is almost ready. Will he fire it? He fires it out. It will be targeted down. No shot for you. There are no more disruptors coming up, and he had a whisper of a dream. He's got a couple photon overcharges, but he doesn't have nearly enough units to hold this off. Yeah, the Vikings even hitting the deck. There might be one more shot, but at this point, there are too many units, and Pig doesn't have the economy. I don't care how many SUVs you kill. How are you going to kill this army? <laughs> one more shot comes out, lands into the center mass. But it's not nearly enough. GG, WP, and we're all tied up at 2-2. Two to two. A, a great exchange there. Pig made it interesting, but Guitar Cheese had been in the driver's seat since the early aggression there. Pig just didn't put all the pieces together. Once again, if you're going to go for a Stargate opener, you either need to get damage with the Stargate opener before you're really committing to a tech switch, or you need to be still going down the Stargate route. Pig tried to go one Oracle into, like, third base and then into Robo, but then he literally had no units. Guitar Cheese walks up and just there's no unit at all. He kills 12 probes and he just had no units. So <laughs> you got to have units. So we'll have to see if we get that matchup again, but we're going to be going into game number five all tied up. Neither player closer than three games from victory. And with that tied up, uh, I'm going to take a quick, quick break, um, a quick commercial break. We're going to advertise Psionic Aftermath, putting on this show match, psionicaftermath.com. Please tell me that's the right one. But I'll be right back. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the cast so far, and then we'll get back into it with game number five. All right, thanks for sticking around. Let's get to game five. Still no mirror matchups. Interestingly enough, not that it's particularly um, unlikely. All 
Remember, they are both telling their race, so it's not like they're hiding. It would be interesting, I think, to see a, uh, a match where neither player told their race intentionally, but then we wouldn't be playing all three races. We'd be playing random versus random full on. Uh, so you got to respect it. All right, let's get back into the match. We are on Blood Boil. And there's the... Oh. In the top left, this time, spawning as a Protoss, it is Pig. And in the bottom right, it is from Cyax. Guitar Cheese, spawning as Zerg, his main race. Thank you, GGOP. Welcome back. Automatically relaying. Thanks. A LMAO nearly two year club. <clears throat> How you doing? We'll see. It looks like he's just going to go for the gate expand at the front. Now, a little bit uh, of a difference on Blood Boil. It is one of the more unique maps in the pool, especially this season. Uh, Blood Boil, you have your somewhat standard down the ramp natural base, a second base that has your eight minerals and two gas geysers. But you have also a much safer back base that has. Uh, nine mineral patches, or ten mineral pa it's ten mineral patches, I think. Or I could just fucking count. Okay, ten. Uh, but only one gas gazer. So, if you want to play safer, you want to get a base up, but you're not as committed to having, uh, as much gas. Uh, especially as a Zerg player, but also as a Terran of Protoss. Uh, you can take that back base, but if you feel comfortable and you want to make sure you have that access to tech... Uh, and just a wall in at the front of everything. You can take the front base first and then follow up with either a third base at the back or another another thing to note, a gold base at the front. And that's not too far away as, as well. Especially, especially Zerg players like to look for that gold base because one, you don't want to be going back all the way past your main into the back here. A lot of Zerg players will just skip this base entirely until much later in the game because as Zerg, you have so many units that's so clunky like queens and ravagers and even zerglings, if they have to run all the way from over here all the way back here, there's not, like, static defenses for zerg are just not that great compared to cannons and overcharges uh, or turrets and bunkers. So a lot of zerg players will expand forward, and pig even scouting that out, making sure that it's not so easy to do here for guitar cheese. Now we have to see... We, we've reached into that point. The cybernetics core is finished on one side. We have speed on the way for Guitar Cheese. He's opted to move out of gas, which means he's going to be looking for a third base very soon. We'll have to see if it's at the front or at the back. I think I just saw a drone move. Yep. He's going for the back base, so he's playing it safe. He's just going to make sure he has the defense against the Adepts and works his economy up in the uh, least risky manner. All right. He does have overlords in position for both scouting and potentially zergling drop. On the other side, Pig is opting for a mothership core and a stalker, so he's expending all his gas on these basic units early on instead of going straight for tech. So I wouldn't be surprised if he goes for a third base as well. Is this going to be a twilight calling it? There it is. I mean, that's not a hard call. It's not like I just pulled that one out of my ass right there. It's very common to make a twilight council. Because the Twilight is a little ambiguous compared to either a Stargate or a Robo. A Twilight allows you access to several different tech paths, whether it be Glaive to Depths, Blink Stalkers, very unlikely to start off with Blink Stalkers, or Charge. Um, so getting that Twilight early means you have aggressive potential, but you also can buff up your gateway units to have defensive potential as well. So the Twilight is a very common choice. Uh, some players will go for a Stargate into a Twilight, some players a Twilight into a Robo, but it's... It, it's Pretty uncommon to start with a uh, robo first, just of all the tech paths. So, all right, two drones actually went down to the first adept, and it did get a full scout as well. It saw that back base. He's actually just still making zerglings. There's a drop at the back, so Pig is going to be forced to defend on two different angles. The mothership core is moving down, and he actually doesn't really have any other gateways. It looks like it's going to be a DT drop. But that is going to be scouted out as the Lings come into the main pig. Doesn't have vision of it quite yet. It's right off the edge. Remember, air units have more vision than ground. And suddenly here come the Lings. He has enough. Whoop! There is a Zealot at the wall. He can pop another overcharge. He's trying to fight the pro with the probes here. But he's got a serious problem as 12 has a... 14! Oh my god. What? It's a massacre. 
I was trying to like keep count of those probes, but it just kept getting so much higher so much quicker. I, I stumbled over my words. So 18 probes have gone down, leaving him at 25. Was the Dark Shrine... Technically, the Dark Shrine was scouted. He does have a lair on the way, does guitar cheese here. But Pig has been crippled. He just got... He kicked him in the back of the knees right there, and Pig is finding himself in a very dicey position. I mean, Archon drops and DTs can make the difference, but the DTs were already scouted, so... Will there be the defenses? Like... The layer's almost done. There are no spore crawlers. So even if he does make an overseer, if he splits DTs pretty well, he, he can hold the wall for now. The overcharge was was triggered. But there's an overseer, overseer being built now. But if he splits the DTs, he might have a chance to get damage done. Another overcharge is going to be used. Guitar Cheese wasn't actually attacking that zealot. He was just trying to run by, so a bit of a mistake there. The DTs trying to stay in range, making sure that they can be picked up and get out of there before the Overseer shows up. He sees the lair. He knows it's there. So Pig is down, but he's not out. There's still potential here. Guitar Cheese doesn't know if he's taken a third base yet or not. So that is the uh, kind of the, the defining factor. Is Pig trying to expand? Oh, there's also this point. You can run all the way around the back, and if they haven't taken down these collapsible rocks, you can actually run into their natural. So, uh, I neglected to mention that earlier. That's not that commonly used until a situation like this. But here we go. He's going up into the net. There's not really that many units to defend. At the same time, the Archon drops are coming out, and they can rip through all these Zerglings. More probes are going down. Not too many. The Overcharge is used. The Archons have already taken out one of the Queens. The Shockwaves washing through the Zerglings. He's trying to micro back, get as many shots off as possible. They hit instantly, so if he micros... Oh! The shields went down. A rare Archon with less than full HP or not dead. Uh, for those who don't know, Archons only have 10 hit points. 10. A, a drone has 40. So once their 350 shields are stripped away, they, they get almost one shot by pretty much everything, including drones. So that's, that's how close that is for comparison. But this Archon drop finding a lot of value. We do see the units lost. Well, Pig has lost a lot of probes. The Zerglings that have gone down and the Queens and everything else have uh, attributed to a large number here for Guitar Cheese. Another Queen going to fall. He's doing some good damage. Remember, Archons do extra damage to Biological, which includes Zerg buildings. Another big, massive run by. He could warp in a couple DTs to help out with this. There are some Immortals and a, a single force field. He runs by the back. What is the worker count right now? Good force field at the front. That saved him from losing a lot of probes. It's 61 workers to 40. Pig is not really microing his prism. He's making sure to do whatever he can to deal with this. We've got more gateways on the way. Pig is holding on. He's really deflecting these aggressions pretty well now. I said that, but then suddenly a few more probes are going to go down. It's starting to get to the point where Pig does have to go all in. Because he knows he's against four bases, including a gold base. So really right now... There are 22 roaches on the way. He's got some Archons. He's got a couple of Mortals. You got to pull the trigger. Just stop making pro. Okay, he's making more probes, but I would say you got to stop making probes and you just got to go for the throat. There's a lot of roaches on the way. If he can shut down this gold base, he might be able to macro it out. I think he'll get it. Charge is almost done. He wants that base so bad. Here come the Immortals. And these are not speed roaches. Non-speed roaches can be killed without too incredibly much effort. That's not that many roaches. This is Pig's best shot. He's got one shot. He's got one opportunity. Great force field. The Archons in the back help you out a lot. The Zealots with a lot of HP. The Changeling's actually working against him. Here come the Queens. The Archons are on top of everything. The Immortals pounding the point home, targeting down the roaches. The Archons ripping through the front. The Queens are all that are left. It does look like just barely with the help of the Queens, he's going to hold on to the gold. He's going to transfuse it. It looked like for a second he might break through, but the Roaches and the Queens are pushing back. We see the gold base, the crux of this attack. He's got Changelings in the front, and I think Pig's got to give this up. But what kind of home does he have to go back to? We do see more Roaches being targeted down, but just the Queen count. He's going to have plus one attack, and suddenly, once that it, Warp Prism goes down, if it does, it doesn't, but... What does he have left? He's got an immortal drop, which is uh, not nearly enough here. <laughs> the 
Tarchis has held on. He brought the queens down for support. He kept the base alive. And these immortals look good, and they're fancy, but... They're not gonna be enough. I don't care if he kills 20 roaches right now, he'd still be down by 60 supply. Well, okay, that math wasn't perfect, but whatever. I don't... <laughs> He's making a Templar archives. You gotta give Pig credit for not... For fighting it out. But, um... At this point, the numbers just don't add up. He can only warp in, like, one zealot at a time. There's a second one. He's kind of throwing away these Zerglings for very little, but... Does it matter? Not really. It does look like Itarchis is going to be able to take home game number five, giving him a 3-2 advantage. It's not over yet. It could still go... No, no, he's pretty fucked. Um, and that's not a wall. That should be two Gs in quick succession here. Or, or... Oh, the Zerglings are going to get trapped. Pig still... F I mean, Archons are what dreams are made of. So, I mean, if you really want to go into it, like, Archons are made of Templar, which focus on psionic powers, and psionic powers are kind of like dreaming and imagination. So, literally what dreams are made of, but that would just be filling time while Pig dies horribly. Uh, which he is. Uh, he's super dead now. But good defense by Guitar Cheese. That's going to be a GG, and we're going into game number five. All right. So we got a pretty even series. We'll see what the next matchup is. What is that? Three ZVPs now? But two with Pig as Zerg and one with Guitar Cheese. Game number six. Yes. Ah, close enough. Whatever comes after three plus two. Loading it up. We got a new matchup, I'll tell you that. One we haven't seen yet. Morning lights up, crystal clear water, blue skies. Just you and me, the open road, the light beams fly by. Alright, let's get into it. Where's my... There we go. And let me update the scores. Because I have my professional caster overlay decked out, obviously. Kappa. Ta-da. All right. In the top left, it is spawning as his main race this time around. The Australian... It is Pig fighting to be the king of random. Once again, sponsored by Psionic Aftermath. I assume that's a new team. Good for them. And in the bottom right, it is your American hero from Psy X, which I'm pretty sure is Psionic Aftermath. I'm not 100%, but I'm like pretty damn sure it is Guitar Cheese. Up 3-2 to two in this random versus random king of random decision match. I'll even say grudge match, because that's more clickbaity. But we do have Zerg versus Terran this time around for ZVT. And it will be Guitar Cheese as the Terran. All right. Let's, let's talk. We're on Odyssey, which is probably... I mean, it looks great. Uh, you've got the... Lush uh, foliage. You've got the um, uh, shallow waves and uh, reefs of the beaches here. You can go for a surf. 
You got some nice waiting pools as well throughout the map. Um, but otherwise, it's a pretty standard map. Uh, as all things are considered, you can get your second base for a minimum risk. A third base is a decision, but uh, it's it's pretty easy to defend. And then there are some watchtowers on alternative attack paths as well. It's not too big. It's not too small. It's just right. But Zerg versus Terran really does come down to... There are a couple stylistic choices you have to make. I would say the first one is the Terran player. Assuming there's not some sort of one base like Ravager all in, but there's not. Uh, and he's already making his choice, but I'm going to talk about the one he's not making first. You have the uh, Hellion pressure into maybe a Liberator, or Hellbats, or a Banshee, or Raven. Uh, pretty much the 1-1-1, one, 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 the Barracks Factory Starport, where, where you try to control the creep and you try to build some space. Um, you try to build some space to take maybe your third base or add on production as a Terran. And you can get these strong units like Hellions that really force out a lot of response out of a Zerg, but they don't directly transition into a strong bioforce like a lot of Terrans like to make. And then there's option two. Option two is the 2-1-1, uh, effectively the Beyond build, where you rack up two barracks early on, you work on getting stim, and then you hit with two medevacs and 16 marines right after the five minute mark, which forces out uh, a Zerg player either needs to make a lot of Zerglings, a lot of Queens, some Roaches, or a combination of the three. Uh, and it does look like Pig is opting for additional Roaches and Zergling speed. So that's the direction he's taking for now. So this this is more focused on doing potentially direct damage and heavy pressure. It, it kind of foregoes any sort of tech. You can't do any sort of run-bys. The Zerg gets a little bit of time to build up their economy, and if you if you kind of botch it, then you lose all map control, unlike with Hellions, where usually as long as you don't just throw them away, uh, you have some map control. But 16 Stim Marines with two Metavags are very dangerous, uh, and they give you a lot to work off of, which is why it's a very popular build with a lot of Terran players pretty much everywhere. Yeah, Pig is adding on more queens. He has not been mining gas. He's back into it now, but he, he cut off a of mining gas for a while, and there's no Roach Warren. So that does indicate he's going to go for the queens and the Zerglings. We'll see. Usually it's customary to add on an evolution chamber right around four minutes. If he wants to go for two, that'll indicate double upgrades, but that does delay your potential lair tech as well. So we'll see what direction Pig wants to go as he's spreading his creep out, and hopefully he spreads it to the main as well. The idea here is to create a buffer zone where if the medevacs are going to get close, the queens can gun them down. So you want to get that creep out as far as possible to force the Terran to drop away from you as opposed to getting right up close and stimming into your third base, especially. Yeah, we do see the creep tumors spread throughout right at the edge. No evolution chamber yet, so we'll have to see when Pig decides to throw that down. He's making Zerglings now. He knows the timing for this is about if they're really on point, they can be landing near your base around 515. It's usually a little bit closer to 5.30, um, but it does depend on exactly how quickly they're able to put their build together. And we see here now the double medevac, the boost, and pre-five minutes he's going to be getting across the map. So there's the double evil chamber out of pick, but he has 700 minerals, and he's supply blocked really hard. Right oh, this is a big mistake. Pig is at 74 out of 74. He can't make any more Zerglings. If, if Guitar Cheese doesn't realize then it won't be so bad. But he's making six overlords at once right now. If Guitarchi's just committed, he might not realize there are no more Zerglings coming out. Stim is done. He can be aggressive. There are six queens. But oh, this could be really dangerous for Pig. He's going to get supply blocked again. It looks like he has just enough Zerglings, but he can't really chase down those Metavacs like he'd like to. So he, he will weather the supply block pretty well. He's going to lose a lot of links for the cost, and he can't really target down those medevacs as easily. Uh, a bit of a mistake there, but not enough time to really capitalize on it. Oh, uh, losing those medevacs would hurt, but he's kept control of the creep. He's forced out a lot more Zerglings. you got to be happy with that as a Terran player. This is not an all-in build. All right, This is not supposed to kill your opponent unless you're beyond and you have the most ridiculous micro. It's supposed to control the creep, control the drone count, uh, and control the drone count by controlling... Did I just say control the drone count once? I mean twice? Oh, Jesus. Oh, it's a disaster. Can we start over? Let's just... Fuck it. We'll do it, li we'll do it live. 
Do it live. All right. Uh, anyways, Guitar Cheese at 78 supply, but he's got five racks on the way. He's got one one a little bit later here than Pig. We'll see if he puts his armory on time, but I think he can be happy with what he did early on. The worker count is almost even, and that kind of indicates the situation where the pressure... Okay, 15 more drones for Pig as he's opened up a little bit of opportunity here. And the armory right off the bat. So, Pig has held this off. He, I wouldn't say he's behind. I wouldn't say he's ahead, but I definitely wouldn't say he's behind because he was really on point with his upgrades, and he defended with minimal losses despite uh, the less-than-ideal situation he was in. And a nice run by here. There's actually no bonker, no units, and Guitar Cheese just moved out. This is really nice. If he gets three or four SCVs as well as the mules, yeah. All he needs to do is defend at home. The armory is about to be finished. 2-2 right off the bat for Pig. So he's prioritizing those upgrades. If you don't have them, the medevacs become so insanely cost-effective. Because the banelings, the zerglings, even if you get a surround, sometimes the marines can just stand there. Speaking of standing there, here come a few slow banelings. Baneling speed is still pretty far out. Trying to target down some of the medevacs, trying to make some more banelings. He's on the creep, which gives him a little bit more leeway. But this is a dangerous attack here out of Guitar Cheese. The supplies are nearly even. He has kicked off his 2-2. Not too much later than Pig here. So if he can lay on the pressure and maybe kill a base, then he can put himself in a great situation. The Aspire is the kicker here. He's not going to go straight to Hive. It looks like Pig going to go for Mass, Ling, Bane, and then Mutas to control potential drops. A slight run by. He can't really afford to send out too many units. Guitar Cheese has now ramped up to full production. Five racks, a reactor factory, and starport. We're going forward. We got a little bit of engagement. It looks like the unit count is a little bit too thin here for Guitar. The Widow Mines are burrowing. Get some okay shots, but the friendly fire is almost as strong. And honestly, some mistakes there. I think Guitar Cheese stepped a little bit too far on the creepy, overcommitted, and now he's going to lose a lot of his supply. It appears there was a run by or a baneling attack on this side. I'm not sure. He still has some zerglings ready for counter, so that's a smart move. And no bunker or supply depot wall, so this is going to continue being a thorn in Guitar Cheese's side. Up until 2 2. Now, at this situation, you really can't engage too easily. Ooh. The Widow Mines are splashing all over the medevacs as well. You don't want to be losing that medevac count. Uh, once you get enough medevacs, you can actually just focus more even on liberators, but you can just focus entirely on ground units and expos. Like, you get 9, 10 medevacs. You don't need to build any more medevacs. Uh, but if you start losing them or they're very badly hurt, well, you need to continue expending that money on medevacs instead of actual units that can kill things on the ground. So, there's a drop coming out, but Pig has macroed up a storm. He's got creep spread over half the map. He's recovered from any sort of stumbles he had early on. And they weren't really stumbles. They were just bar barely even hiccups. And now the, his army on the ground is far too big for Guitar Cheese to move against. He does have Mutas on the way. Where are you going? Jesus. He tried to go forward, but the Queens were having none of it. Looks like a medevac with a handful of Marines went down. And the Banelings are coming in. How many? Four, six, seven SCVs. And that brings him down to 52 against 84 drones. The full swarm is being brought to bear here. How many hatcheries is that? He's got five in a lair. So six hatcheries, 84 drones, 2-2, two, two, Mutas on the way. Guitar Cheese not able to even drive back the creep spread, let alone pressure any of these bases. He will be flying away, but he's going to be flying to his demise here as the Mutas will gun down the medevac. The engagement on the edge of the creep. The There's only one Widow Mine. That's not nearly enough to turn the tides. The medevacs are, though. He will at least shut down this creep, but he needs to put on a lot more pressure, and I don't know if he has the numbers to do it. Guitar Cheese has not started 3-3. Pig has 2,000 minerals in the bank, but a supply block keeping him from using it. So for a few moments here, Guitar Cheese's army supply is actually going to be larger. Will it be enough? Here come the Banelings. They actually don't crash through. Great engage. The Marauders soaking up the little splash damage that came through. He's now stemming onto the creep. This is starting to get dangerous. You want to be very careful here. You had a good fight. You don't want to lose the war because you got too excited. But, oh, God. I'm surprised Pig didn't jump on that. 
The Marines are stemming back, but he's still on the creep, which means they can close the distance. The Mutas are tanking some of the damage as well. He's actually overstimmed, and Guitar Key's getting driven back. The Mutas are going to take out the Metavax as well. The momentum has shifted. He stepped too far. He stepped too fast, and now he's going to be paying for it with most of his supply. Widow Mines are going to connect. Big hits as well, but they're not going to make the difference. Oh, some more where that came from, but still. Without plus three, plus three on the way, without really touching any of these bases, any of this production, Pig can just bring another wave to bear and wash it all over Guitar Cheese's army. He's taking a fourth. He's going for a planetary, but it looks like a counterattack killed five more in the way of SCVs, bringing him down to 57 against 77. And this gold base is starting to be mined from as well. The income just so strong for Pig, and he's got money in the bank while Guitar Cheese is struggling to make any headway. Still no bunker at this third base. Really just continually making it difficult for Guitar Cheese to focus all his efforts forward. A lot of mutilists in the air as well. 21 on the flock of death. Banelings are being morphed. It's even upgrades on the ground, so that means if they're on creep, it's going to be a very tough fight. There are no widow mines here. He stims back. He's trying to get behind everything. Some splits coming out. But there's so many mutas and zerglings, it doesn't matter that much because the banelings aren't even the biggest damage dealer. He's holding strong. He's got several medevacs. More marines are coming up. But he can target down the medevacs themselves. And without them, he doesn't have the stopping power to crash through. 11 more SCVs have gone down. 13 more. He's cleared out the third. That brings him down under 50. The mules will drop, but at what cost? Guitar Cheese still trying to go down this avenue here, but it's been blocked off for construction of many, many, many banelings. And it's 168 to 113. Make that 182 supply. There's a single turret. That's not nearly enough. That's nothing. As he takes it out and all the SCVs alongside it, Guitar Cheese is falling apart. And GG as the series is tied up at 3-3. Just little things, little things. Guitar Cheese had some good timings. Pig made some macro mistakes early, but uh, he is definitely more experienced in playing that game out. Like, you need, you need a bunker and some depots here. Like, if he had a bunker and a couple depots in front, just making sure no runbys came by, I think these attacks, like, have 15, 20 more supply. And he takes a fourth base quicker and all kind of spirals from there. But little things like that, and I make those mistakes all the time, but that's why Pig was able to grind it back is because if you're always stimming back to defend your SCVs or you're losing SCVs and you can't support your economy, you can't really push against a Zerg who has six hatcheries and 80 drones. So uh, Pig, definitely the better macro player there. We're all tied up going into game seven. But this is a best of nine, which means it could go the distance. All right. We're loading up game number seven. Why do Terrans not use siege tanks? Why widow mines? Siege tanks are terrible. Uh, the reason, I mean, they're not terrible, but. As time goes on, siege tanks cannot be produced as quickly. They cost a lot of gas, uh, and the friendly fire usually works against you. Once you siege up a tank, it can be dove on by zerglings and banelings and mutilists, whereas widow mines are cheap. They can move quickly along with a bio army, and they can take out large chunks of units for very little investment. Uh, a siege tank just, apart from an initial siege, just doesn't get enough done. Yeah, against players who will run up a ramp uh, or down a ramp into siege tank fire, they're pretty good. But at the highest level, siege tanks are almost as good for the Zerg player as they are for the Terran in that situation. All right. And now I'm excited to announce we have another Terran versus Zerg. But we're switching sides. This time, Pig is the Terran and Guitar Cheese is the Zerg. So, um, here we go. Thank you, a bit lazy. So we get the uh, full random split here. Thank you very much. We'll see who's the better Terran and who's the better Zerg. Alright, back into it. In the bottom left of Proxima Station. It is this time spawning with the SCVs. It is Pig. And in the top right, with drones of his own, 
Guitar Chiefs. Australia versus America. Tied up 3-3 to for the King of Random. And we're on one of the... This is definitely a different map. The, one of the most defensible maps. One of the most annoying maps in the pool, depending on what style you like to play. But you have access to that pocket back base, which is a full mining base with two gases and eight mineral patches. And a single ramp protects it. So a lot of Terran players will get quite greedy, maybe go for three. Because even your base at the front, your third, doesn't really have too much of an area you need to cover to defend. Uh, so... On the other side, Zerg players do like to expand outwards because for the opposite reasons, uh, they expand. A Zerg player wants to get a foothold. They want to have, have as much control of the map, as much vision, uh, as much creep spread as possible. So if you expand to the back and sit behind a ramp, well, then you're vulnerable to all the things Terran can do to keep you up that ramp. Hellions, siege tank pushes, drops at the back, and then you really have no real chance to attack. Your defenses rely on queens, which don't move very very quickly, and they don't move across the map. They rely on creep, uh, which if you're expanding backwards first, you're going the wrong direction. Uh, so Guitar Chi's opting for that forward base because he wants to be moving forward as a Zerg, where Pig walling off and taking the back one because he wants to solidify his economy uh, and get in probably to the mid-game. I haven't seen... There have been no real hardcore cheeses. I guess Pig's proxy Stargate against Terran. Would have been the closest to a hardcore cheese, but he still ended up macroing out of that. So neither player showing off these, like, ridiculous one bases. Um, especially not on a map like this. Resubscription confirmed. Thank you, Pappy. You had one four months in a row. Thanks. This first Overlord will be scouting the front, and we'll see that there is indeed a reactor. But it won't go far enough to to see the uh, factory here. Now, believe me, this is intentional. Out of pig. He doesn't make this factory here because he's lazy. He makes this factory because he knows an overlord is going to get vision of the front of his base. And a lot of times... So, what what this reactor barracks also, do, also does, and the hidden factory, now Guitar Cheese does not know, is this a two barracks play? Is he going to go for a quick stim timing or something? Or does he have a factory? He's left it... Uh, up to a guessing game here, really. Uh, which is really important against the Zerg. So the less time they have to prepare, the harder it is, obviously. That goes for any race, but especially Zerg and how they work. So a little mind game there from Pig. I'm the, I mean, that's not a game changer. He built a factory and he hit it. Oh my god, GG! Call it right now! Calm down, Wolf. But we do have a lair on the way for Guitar Cheese. He's going for the two base. This looks to be Mutas. It could... If he starts a Rotron right now, it could be Nidus. Looks to be Mutas. Not 100% on that call. But we will see. Yeah, two medivacs are... Two medivacs? Wait. <gasps> I like this. I like this. It's going to be a two medivac, like, uh, 12 marines, two widow mines. Is he going to have two widow mines? I don't, I don't think so. But he's going to go very quickly out with two medivacs. So he doesn't... Re he, he might have... Just enough for a spire, but he doesn't have the additional guesses. Is this Hydras? Is he going to go Hydras? Blow my mind. Go Hydras, Guitar Cheese. Do it. Do it. Blow my mind right now. Do it. What are you doing on those rocks? Oh, no. He's going to hide a spire. Kind of an odd way to go about it, but... Uh, and he's put it in a location that is somewhat unlikely to be scanned, but the problem is... Pig is on the way across with a strong drop, and this is great against someone who's going for early tech, because not only does it keep them pinned back at home and puts pressure on them, uh, it also will force out a lot of these mediocre zerglings. Like, he has to make a lot more zerglings, he has to make detection against the widow mine, and it's not like it's a huge investment, he can just pick up and get out. So, if there were a bunch of queens here, Pig might be shut down, like if there were four or five queens... But there's only one or two queens. Okay, there are enough Zerglings. I'm kind of surprised there were enough Zerglings already. I think Guitar Cheese had an idea of what this could be. So he made a bunch of Lings. Um, did Pig scout the Spire? Ooh, he started around the edge. But I do like this build choice, especially on a map. Like, we're on Proxima Station. You have this ramp. There's no way he's getting up that ramp without anything but a huge commitment. And uh, I don't think either player is really willing to make that. Kill that. So... Just going for the quick drop instead of the stim drop has paid off, I would say, but 
At this point, I think Pig's starting to realize there's something going on. He hasn't seen the spire yet, but he's seen the gas. He's seen the queen count. He's about to see there's no base at the back. He has to know what this is. The engineering bay is about to finish. Unfortunately, CG up in range of the spore crawler. That's a bit of a mistake. But uh, even if he hasn't seen a single muta, he has to have a very good idea of what's happening right now. Yeah, more barracks on the way. This is full-on two-base. There is no third command center. He's really powering up. Five racks is about the limit you can support on two bases. And he's making tanks. Because while I just uh, criticize tanks as an overall choice, there are no banelings here. Without upgrades, without the carapace upgrades, tanks one-shot zerglings and banes. It's when the upgrades come into play that tanks really lose a lot of their effectiveness. Because once you get the plus one carapace, and baneling speed especially, tanks no longer one-shot anything. But, when it's just mutas and a bunch of unupgraded zerglings, the tanks are going to obliterate everything on the ground. And that is why the tanks are such a strong choice in this low economy, low upgrade situation. What do we have in the back here? A single lib, and the mutas are on the other side. He's making the turrets, but a little bit late. Just target it down. There goes the turret. So Pig, got a bit of harass to deal with. I would imagine with these medevacs coming out, Pig's not going to wait much longer. He's got... Ooh! Bit sloppy there, losing a Muta. He needs everything he can get. This is a very strong attack. Is this Liberator getting kills? Oh my. Five kills on the Lib. Bringing Guitar Cheese to 46. Oh, we'll get the Queen too. Almost. Another one coming out, but... This is quite a strong attack from Pig. The creep spread is pretty far out, but remember, there are no upgrades on anything but the mutas. There's no combat shields on this force, so friendly fire is going to be real. And if he stims, they're going to be taken down that much easier. It looks like he's relying almost entirely on mutas to defend this. He's going to have a handful of banes just to force the targeting and force him off a of creep. But this is just a full muta build. And until there's combat shields, that's... Oh, no, 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 no. Well... It, do it doesn't take an expert to tell you that's not good. All right. <laughs> 107 to 111 supply. 65 versus 52 army supply in Pig's favor, but this is a two base effectively all in. He has no command center behind this. He has the plus one and combat shields on the way. But if Guitar Cheese does hold on till mainling speed, he's going to be in an okay position. The creep is being cleared. Without plus one carapace, it's very... Like, once he engages, he has to go all the way. All right. There's a light drop into the main base just to force some attention away. That's a lot of banelings here. He's trying to stim up. Some banelings being split off. He will be able to micro almost entirely away from them, and a lot of zerglings are committed to the back. Will Pig use that opportunity to step forward? 120 to 121 supply. The mutas have cleared up the medevac, but that will give a little bit more time for Pig to move forward. He's got a lot of marines and several medevacs. 121 to 119 supply. Baneling speed is done. More banelings are on the way, but the creep is not cleared up yet. A lot of stim coming out. He's able to take out these marines so quickly after the stim. The muta's trying to clean up the job. The friendly fire actually helping out the mutalist here, and that's the reason you don't see tanks that often, but combat shields finishes just in time to help take out the mutas. It looks like it's going to be about as close as you can get here as the mutas are going to clear up the rest of the medevacs if they're not boosted away, and he doesn't boost them away. Guitar Cheese will be able to come out on top, but at a very heavy cost. The worker count is 54 to 45. There are no evolution chambers, but there's also no creep spread. It's everything on these mutas. Pig is just now taking a 30. He's taking on the low ground. The mutas are coming in again, but he will dip back just in time. With a follow-up push, the best defense against mutas is a good offense. You keep them from harassing you, and you can pressure them. Even if you're not killing bases, as long as the mutas are not backstabbing you, killing your SCVs, you're feeling a lot better. But unfortunately, Pig lost a lot of medevacs there. He doesn't really have that much mobility. Each medevac is precious. He will choose one to split off and distract these mutalists, but that's a significant portion of his army right now. He's only at 101 supply. 45 of that is in SCVs. He does have plus one with plus one armor on the way still. No evolution chambers, but a fourth hatch has been created by Guitar Chief for that production. Only a single creep tumor remains on the map as well. The Muta's going into the main. They will dive on the turrets. They do have plus one, plus one. The carapace is included. 
He will dip away, get a reactor, hamstring that production just a little bit. There is vision here. What is he bringing back? Yeah, he's bringing everything back to defend. Pig gonna have a little bit of time to maybe reassert some map control. He's taken down... I'm not sure if he was the one to take... I assume he was the one to take down these rocks. The Mews are gonna come back. He's just... Honestly, he knows this medevac's going to die. He's just trying to take as much as he can with it. Down goes one Muta. And it looks like the medevac will be cleared up, but this brought guitar cheese all the way back, and that opens up an opportunity for Pig to move into the middle of the map. Now he's going... The Mutas find the medevacs before the Marines can engage them. This positioning is quite dirty, but also at the same time, if he commits a few too little Marines... This, this army is actually looking pretty small here. There, Once again, there's no plus one, plus one. The, the Spire is actually getting sieged up. But he's swinging around with everything. There's only a handful of medevacs. Down goes a tank. The Ling Bane Hammer is swinging around the back. It's only plus one versus zero, zero. A lot of Banes are coming in. The tank will siege up. It'll be taken out before a single shot comes out. The Mutas from the right. The Ling Bane from the left. And Pig will be crushed in a Zerg sandwich. 85 supply to 131, and that Muta count is not going down this time. He has to hold on against the Swarm. Once again, the upgrades are in his favor, but almost nothing else is, and plus two is coming up for these Mutas. He's really leaning on them to get the damage done. He's going to go into the Siege Tanks. There are no Medivacs to heal up these Stim Marines. The 1-1 one, one Mutas are doing a great job. Down goes the tank. The Banelings are rolling in, forcing the Micro back. Another tank going to go down. The Marines are continuing to stim back. He's continuing to trade out supply while keeping as many mutas intact as possible. But Pig maintains most of his SEVs, leaving him at 46. That means the incomes are nearly even. Actually, the mineral count is in favor of Pig. So he's going to be able to replenish his army relatively quickly unless he loses most of his production, his reactors, and his add-ons. Guitar cheese up to 135. He's still building mutas, but he's running out of minerals in his main. We should see a gold base or a fourth base pretty quick. He's finished plus two. These mutas can actually fight head-to-head. -head. If they're ahead in upgrades against marines, especially if there aren't very many medevacs, they can fight. They can go straight up. Uh, they don't want to lose too many, but if it's like 10 marines against 25 mutas, yeah, you'll lose one muta, but you crush the marines. So... Oh. Guitar Cheese really leaning on this. He's got a fourth base on the way. He's taking on the rocks. Still, he has one Evo Chamber, but has yet to do anything. So, the no upgrade game, but he's really focusing on the skies. And this is when, like, Pig needed Widow Mines already. The lack of Widow Mines means if you're just fighting straight up with Marines, you lose a fight, you're going to lose the game. Widow Mines can maybe turn the tides. Look, he's fighting, but he's losing. More Marines are coming down. He lost one or two Mutas for a dozen Marines. He'll take that trade because that means Pig can never push out. Without Widow Mines or, I forgot about that unit, a Thor. Pig cannot move out against these Mutas. There are just simply too many. Guitar Cheese swinging into the main. He picks off some more Marines. Slams into a reactor, almost taking it out in one volley. And it's starting to look more and more like a Guitar Cheese situation to win here that was the worst way to say winning but those turrets are being one shot ripped from the mineral line pig is bleeding out here and it's looking more like there's just there's no wild card here there's no widow mines there's going to be a single thor the upgrades aren't really that great there's not a bunch of medevacs or a big drop it's just slowly but surely guitar cheese is getting more and more ahead so yeah, going into the main, opting for another tech lab, but I, I don't know if this game will last too much longer. The barracks now being the target. Oh, big javelin missile strike on the midst of everything, but once again, Pig is doing a lot of not dying, but not a lot of winning. As it's 178 supply to 108, still nothing on the deck here for Guitar Cheese, uh, upgrade-wise, but 40 mutas in the sky. Yeah, a single drop. It flies by an Overlord. It knows its days are numbered. Now in zero. Yeah, some mainlings will be taken out. Honestly, Pig's just got to go. But the hammer's coming down. He's just going for it. The mutas are coming up. The splash damage is good, but it's not nearly good enough. The Thor is ripped away. The Marines come behind. And Pig 
is going to be forced to tap out. We're going to go to 4-3. Guitar Cheese, your American currently Zerg player, is going to get the lead as we go in. Just that was a game for Widow Mines. Once again, I think if instead of continuing to make tanks, he made four, five, six Widow Mines in some of those fights, it could have made the difference. Uh, Pig really committed to the fight on creep without combat shields as well. Um, that's one of the games where you get two, three factories and you just keep pumping them out because the best counter to mutas are Widow Mine Thor. And honestly, everything was in the mutas. It was all about the mutas. There were no upgrades on the ground. He had next to no creep spread. It was all about the mutas. But Pig never really directly countered him. So, rest in peace. But it's a best of nine, which means four games isn't enough yet. As we go into game number eight. That's how math works. Oh god, this this intro again. It's getting down to it. Hmm. Looks like we've reset the map pool. We're actually just playing with this pool's maps. We're going back to sequencer. And, oh, a bit of a mix-up as well. We will see. Well, let's go into game number eight. Of Pig versus Guitar Cheese, the king of random show match. Put on by Psionic Aftermath. And uh, the replay is provided by Pig. Casted by me this time around. Automatically relaying. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Tentacle Tim. Welcome back. I want to see you work. Don't we all? And once again, Zerg versus Protoss. But this time, we're going to see our Australian random player drawing the Protoss card. And on the other side, up 4 to 3. The American main race is Zerg. From Cyax, Guitar Cheese. All right, and the Overlord takes a quick breather and then starts off on its journey. <laughs> we'll have to see. So we've already seen a match on Sequencer. Pig was Zerg and uh, Guitar Cheese was Protoss. Guitar Cheese pulled off a just mass Adept Shade all in. Uh, that was pretty disgusting. I, I think the word disgusting summarizes it. And Pig was caught off guard uh, and ended up losing that first match. We'll see if Pig goes for something equally as spicy. Or he mixes it up. <laughs> Guitar Cheese will opt for the hatch first. He's not going to go for the safety pool. Or he's going to be going for the economy. On the other side, it's a gate expand as Pig playing it pretty safe. In his own right, he's got the wall at the front, but he's got the Nexus behind, indicating he wants to tack up and have a bit more of an economy. Still no one base all-ins from anyone. Well, no really committed one bases, still besides that proxy Stargate. I love the terror music in this Protoss versus Zerg match. It really sets the theme for me. So... Just just a side note, StarCraft Remastered. Apparently they've remastered the soundtracks, and they've released them on SoundCloud so you can listen to them. And I gotta say, I'm not a fan of the remastered Terran soundtrack. It's still good, but they made it sound too professional uh, from the Brood War one. They, they made it a little bit more fancy, which I think goes against how the Terran soundtrack should be. I don't know how many people have actually listened to that. You can find it on StarCraft.com, not StarCraft 2, StarCraft.com. But it annoys me a little bit, because I don't like it as much. So, um... 
all these fancy new sounds and audio quality or whatever bullshit you want to argue. Alright. Hey, quick third base from Guitar Cheese. He's gotten speed. And he's got only one in gas behind. So he does opt for the third base earlier. And he's not going for the inner base. He's going for the outer one. Which is pretty customary from Zergs because they do want to establish a foothold out of the map. <coughs> it does look like a Stalker will be the first choice. Will he actually get the Overlord? He should eventually, yeah. Looks like Gitarchi is going to come in and he'll probably dip right back out when he sees the Stalker come back. <laughs> he almost gets it from the low ground, but... A very interesting play here. He's got the Twilight, and then he's got to wait. So the last time Pig was playing Protoss against Zerg, we saw the DT drop. This is very much looking like a DT drop again. The Twilight, then the Robo? That almost always indicates Dark Templar, and then you get an Archon drop going, and then you can follow up with a lot of different things. Zealot's on the way here. He has the... There it is. He's going to be adding on the Robos as well. Will we see an overcharge? We do. But, I mean the gateways, not the robos. Uh, but the robotics is completed. Just the existence of the robotics facility has already given away... Yeah, Guitar Cheese knows. He's already making a lair. He knows exactly the options a Protoss could have here. And he knows the DT drop is a, a pretty intense likelihood. You're not going to go for an immortal push. Not on this map. It's so far to get to the other side. You might go for like a charge lot all in. Or even like he did, some sort of glaive to depth all in, but it's it's likely to be the Dark Templar, especially with that Stalker first, because the Stalker first kills the Overlord, right? And then you can't scout the main, so you can't confirm its DTs. So that's already, by not having that information, put that into Tarchis' mind. He's thinking, why are you hiding something? What do you have to hide? And obviously Dark Templar is pretty high on that list. Stargate's another one. Um, but you usually don't go Robo into Stargate. He's actually... The War Prism has been seen here as well. Uh, so everything's given away. I, I like this choice. Pig, instead of trying to full-on commit to some sort of attack here, he's probably just going to warp in the four DTs. Does he have four gates? Yeah, he does. And get the third base behind. Because even if he knows it's coming, like even if Guitar Cheese knows it's coming, you can't really counter-attack against DTs for a while, especially if there's an Archon drop. You just don't have the units, really. Oh, my God. Well, isn't that disgusting? Yeah. As he slices through almost everything. You don't want to lose any. You want the Archon drop to follow up. So it's important not to lose any Dark Templar or, or it's going to cost you even more. But once again, if this Warp Prism and these DTs and these potential Archons are still here, he can't really move across the map. He just doesn't have the speed. That wasn't... No puns... Well, actually, puns were intended with that one, by the way. I just zoned out for a second and realized what I said. Because he literally can't move out until Roach Speed is done, at the very least. We got some splits off. The way it's just kind of a radial splash damage is how the Archon works. So you just... It's in an area around behind the unit you're attacking. Uh, so you see him splitting those Roaches off to minimize that. I like this as well. Bring in the Observer Rump. But let's see where this is heading right now. A little bit of a Zergling run by, but... We've got Charge and Immortals on the way. Only a single Robo, but uh, he's going to be committing to that Immortal Archon Charge Lot. So that early Legacy of the Void, that powerhouse ooh, as well. I keep saying that, but um, taking out one of the Archons takes a lot of punch out of this pressure. It's quite an expensive unit. It's nice pick off there for Guitar Cheese. But if he doesn't really put together the units... In time, Roaches and Ravagers are good, but if you get enough Charge Lots, Immortals, and Archons, they'll just rip right through everything. So he's going to need either b go up to Broodlords. He's going to need to take, like, a really good engagement angle. Uh, he could go up to Lurkers. You don't really see Lurkers that often nowadays just because Protoss players have gotten really good at deal with, dealing with them. So we will see what, what direction he decides to take. He knows this is a threat. He even sees the Immortal there. Will we see a Force Field? Ooh. I feel like that was a great opportunity, but yeah, a couple force fields will shut Guitar Cheese down for now. And he doesn't, he hasn't invested the gas in 
really many Ravagers. He has the one to help break force fields, but if you invest the gas, that means you can't really tech up. You can't go towards those other more efficient tech paths. So I, I do like that Guitar Cheese is holding off. A lot of players would just be like, fuck it, 12 Ravagers, let's fucking go. And then attack in and hope Pylon Overcharge isn't very good. Ooh, nice snipe. <laughs> Knocks it down. But he's playing for the macro game. We got a fourth base on the way. He's taking it a little bit tucked in here, just playing it safe. A Hydra is done, plus two attack. No infestation pit or spire. On the other side, Pig is opting for the Templar Archives, which is the next step. And only a single forge, but two immortals at a time. So that does mean his army is going to be growing in just pure back backbone and strength. Having those immortals and archons, the zealots are just kind of filler. They're the icing on the cake. Uh, the Immortals are the punch, alright? Without a strong backbone, you're just gonna flop around and not get anything done. So, a handful of Ravagers. He's still only committed to four. Some more force fields, but the time it takes for the Corrosive Bow to free the Roaches is almost too long. Yeah, the Hydras are on the way. I'm, I'm surprised to see him going for Hydras. Uh, maybe he just wants to try to take advantage of these high ground areas, but Hydras are kind of a... Uh, once again, Roach Hydra is the unenthusiastic hand job of unit compositions. It can get the job done, but no one's really that excited about it. Okay? Like, it, it, it doesn't do it very fast. Uh, if, if you hit the right spots, it can be okay. But it's just... Almost everyone will be doing something else if they could. So, uh, we, we see Guitar Cheese opting for that Roach Hydra composition, but once again, the Immortals just blasting into this army. And once Size Storm comes out, once Warp Prisms comes out, it just doesn't move around very quick. So he, he's going for that Brute Force attack. Pig is in position. He's continually trying to get a beat on where those units could be. We got more Ravagers coming out. Guitarchi's only at 66 drones. He has no Hive on the way. He does have four bases, but we do have a DT counterattack. Oh, beautiful choice from Pig. The tactical backstab here. In this will force. Yeah, he's going to go straight for the uh, Spore Crawler. He should be able to take out this base. He's not even building any Overseers. There's no more detection. He can either go for the drones or he can go straight for the base. And now that he's driving this army back, suddenly Guitar Cheese finds himself holding the possible worst set of units he could ever have to deal with this. Where is the Overseer? It's coming down, but he's going to get the base. The third will fall. There's a Warp Prism on the other side, and now we see why Warp uh, Roach Hide Ravager is just so weak, especially the larger the map is. Pig has built up a very strong army. He doesn't have any upgrades, but he doesn't really need them when his units just do so much damage on their own, and he's going to have Storm as well. Yeah, a lot of Lings on the way, but the worker count is 61 to 71 in favor of a Protoss who's building some of the most cost-effective units against everything but Hive Tech. There are going to be Storms done. The Immortal count is in nearly double digits. He's at 8 right now. Roach, Hydra, Ling, they all have speed, but I don't know if they can run fast enough to avoid the storms. He's actually swinging around, surprisingly caught out of position here. Will Guitar Cheese? No, he's going to go for a semi-base trade scenario. Pig is going to have to scramble back. There are no, there is no detection. There are no overseers. He warps in a few DTs. He's going to warp in some zealots as well. He's going to catch this Zerg army in between his base. That's not where the Hydras want to be. Some more Zealots are coming up. That base will be cancelled again. It seems like Pig will just simply win the War of Attrition. There's been no real fights here. It's just been Pig beating up uh, Guitar Cheese's army at almost every turn. This is this has just been a rough game from the start here. Guitar Cheese never... He just has this army. It's so clunky. And this is one of the clunkiest maps in general. Moving up and down the high grounds. The distance from each side is just... It, it feels like a slow, painful agonizing death here uh, for our Zerg hero. And Pig is going to keep himself and bring this to the rubber match. The Decider, it does seem, they're both at even supply, but some of these players are more equal than others right now. As he's going to come down, the Storm Hammer will strike home directly into the midst of everyone, everything here. The Immortals living up to their name, okay. The Storms were gotten rid of. Pig lost a lot of his front line, but now he's on the high ground. He has a handful of force fields, and the Immortals did not die. Oh, my God. He just killed, like, four of his own Hydras with Corrosive Bile. What the fuck was that? 
Um, so Guitar Cheese, not only is he getting hit by Pig, now he's hitting himself. As, once again, the DTs either cancel or kill a base. I have no idea over here. The Immortals are holding their ground. It looks like they will go down eventually. But at what cost? Pig actually losing a lot of his army. This was pretty sloppy here. The DTs are still coming in. And I, I think he just has so much back at home. He has so much back at home, like, even if he loses all those Immortals, which is terrible. You don't, you never want to do that. But he's too big to fail right now. He just needs a couple Templar, a few Archons. As long as he doesn't just warp in charge lots three at a time to defend, he's good to go. The DTs are still doing damage. There's a War Prism on the other side. The supplies are surprisingly even, but once again, uh, because much like your mother, Roach Hydra uh, looks very large. It takes up a lot of supply and money, but it doesn't get a lot done. So, he's still trying to push forward into Storms, into Archons, but this Protoss army is... Once he puts all the pieces back together, he's going to have a couple Storms ugh, right in the midst. And, once again, the spread is good! And Pig is taking some of the worst fights you can ever take, but as long as he casts his Storms and warps into his Zealots, he should eventually be able to deal with this. And it's a GG. A little bit a little bit sloppy, a little bit scrappy there near the end. But Pig was definitely in control of that game. Uh, he let it slip a few times, but he brought it back. And he just had the economy. He still had, he had 66 probes to 34 uh, drones there. He could have given up that base and still been okay. Whereas Guitar Cheese really didn't even confirmed. have an economy. Thank you, Reaper. And we're going Thanks. to the decider. 4-4. Four to four. Game number 9 is coming up. Very interestingly, no mirror matchup so far as well. Uh, we'll have to see if game number nine will change that Resubscription up. Confirmed. Thank you, Mendez. Welcome back. Relayed. 29 Thanks. months in a row. Haven't been watching lately, Let's... but you're still the best winter less than three. Let's get it loaded up. It's going to be an ascension to ire once again. Looks like we've gone full circle. We're going to game number nine to crown the king of random. Especially outside of Korea. This will be the final match, four to four. Thank you so as well for the donation. This is totally just for the much like your mother call. Alright. Let's get back into it. In the bottom right, it is with his last chance to put on the crown from Australia. It is Pig spawning in as Terran. And in the top left, from America, it is from Psyx. And thank you once again to Psionic Aftermath for sponsoring this event and Pig for sending out the replays. Guitar, cheese. Speaking of cheese, Pig has snuck out an SCV at nearly the beginning of the match. What does he intend to do with that? Is he going to proc... Oh. Pig... On this map before, cheesed with a proxy Stargate. He was the Protoss against Guitar Cheese's Terran. This time, he's the Terran against Guitar Cheese's Protoss. I really used as many words as possible and as many syllables as possible to explain that. But he's proxying a barracks out on the map. Is this... Now, there are a few different... Okay, double gas. This is a proxy factory cyclone. This is not a proxy reaper, even though he might make a reaper. 
This is for getting a factory and maybe a reactor right off the bat. And if Guitar Cheese goes for a Gate Expand, especially without a Probe Scout, which he's done so far, this could do terrible, terrible damage. This is the cheesiest cheese we've seen so far out of either player. Pig rolling the dice as is appropriate in a random versus random match, even if they are telling their race. And we will see. Or is it... I mean, option two is Proxy Ghost. There's no way he goes Proxy Ghost, though. Not in game... Not in game nine. Like, this... Ha he, he moved the S... No, 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 no. This... No, no. Is he going to make a factory at home? He makes a factory at home. He's just going to proxy the Reaper? Oh, I wanted... No! I wanted the Cyclones so bad. They were true in my mind. <sighs> but he's going to make the factory at home. The Reaper is going to come in a bit early, which could kill a few... Uh, could kill a few in the way of probes. I mean, he's not going to expect... He's not going to have the Mothership Core of the Adept for a few extra seconds. So one or two probes should be the casualty here, and they should give away a little bit of what Pig is doing. There goes one probe right off the bat. But it does look like he's just going to do not really the macro version, but the safer version. And now Pig's got to get out. If he gets killed by the overcharge, one shot, two shots, he gets taken out. Ooh, getting a bit greedy there, Pig. And he's going to get stuck by the double overcharge hits. Another Reaper's coming in. The Shade should see it. He doesn't cancel the Shade. The Mothership Core is completely out of position. But Pig is not risking it. He doesn't know where the Mothership Core is. So. And there's a Starport. We're just going to just throw it, throw the darts on the mini-map. That's where we're putting all our buildings. One over here. Put the factory back at home for a wall. A Starport over to the left-hand side. Nobody's ever going to know. All right. So this is a 1-1-1, one, 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 but with buildings in pretty much every part of the map, at least at one point. The Mothership Core is out of position. I'm not sure how this Reaper actually made it all the way up, but he's going to pick up another kill. That's two now. He's going for three and four. There's a little bit of micro on the other side. It looks like Pig does want to make a command center. Three kills almost out of this Reaper. He finishes it off. There's not quite enough for another overcharge to kill this. Will he actually lose it? It looks like he will. But the command center will be delayed. So both players kind of really getting into each other's faces as this kicks off here. Did Pig get a scout of the Robo? He didn't actually see the Robo somehow. I'm not sure. But uh, he does have a Liberator on the way, and a Robo is just not going to help very much. It's just not going to help very much against Liberators, but it will help greatly against the Cyclone pressure, so we'll have to see. There's still only a single gateway. Warp Gate isn't even done. This Liberator is going to siege you up with no defenses. He's going to completely deny the mining. But at the same time, Pig doesn't have a second base, so we do have to factor that in. With two more barracks on the other side, he's going to have the production to follow up with a bio push. So this is a one, two, three punch. Punch one coming in. The Reapers put on a little bit of pressure. And then the second step, we have the Cyclones. It baits out the Robo. And then number three, here comes the Liberator. And there is nothing to deal with this. And the Cyclone is even pressuring the front at the same time. A single stalker will force this to unsiege, but Pig is taking control of this game, even if it means his economy is slightly less. All right, is he making any more? He's making another liberator, but a bit of a supply block will shut him down. He does have to move the probes, but remember he has 33, 34, 33 <laughs> probes to 29 SCVs. So Pig has been creating them pretty religiously here. Ooh. These Liberators are starting to pay off, not only in kills, but in just general mining time. We do see the double tech lab, right? No, tech lab and reactor. Oh, yes, two, uh, another tech lab already. I'm an idiot. Uh, so he is going to be going for the stim. We should see medevacs after these. Ooh, losing one Liberator as well. So. Guitar Cheese has taken some big hits, but he does have two Nexi. Uh, he is mining off of both bases. So it... it it, it's not curtains for him. In fact, he's still pretty well off. This Liberator could change that. But there's a strong attack moving out. And remember, the Starport units are not going to be at home, right? And on the other side of the map, that's a bit the wrong pathing there. But what what is actually at home here? Is there a tank? There's a single tank. He's still pretty far off a of stim. There's like five Marines and a Widow Mine. And he has no detection for that Widow Mine. But still harassing with the Liberator. His pig. That Stalker's done but the tank needs to retreat if he loses the tank this could spiral here 
two immortals. It takes three hits to kill a tank just from those immortals. So we'll see what factors in. He does have Guardian Shield as well to help out. Will he back off when he sees the tank? No, he's punching through the front. He's trying to get through the SCVs. He doesn't quite do so. The boys were pulled just in time. They will shield the tank, and only the immortals will survive. How appropriate. We do have a Liberator. Maybe maybe not the place to put that. What am I? That is the worst case scenario. No, my God. That was almost a total, complete disaster there for Guitar Cheese. Oh, 4 HP from possibly just outright losing the game. He would have lost all his map control and an immortal as well. Oh, that was, that was nearly it. I mean, the Liberator is still harassing. He's still denying mining. But if he had lost that, that was, that was pretty much lights out. But two immortals in the main. That's still, Stim is done, so is Combat Shields. I don't know how much I see this getting done. That immortal, a bit bold. It will be pulled back. A lot of adepts have been committed into this base. And they are quite strong, as are the Immortals. This Warp Prism Micro is keeping him in the match. I'm not sure. Is he? He's attacking his own bear. Pig! 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 Very stressful game. <laughs> yes. He has four more where that came from. So that's why that attack did much more damage. He wasn't attacking the Immortals and the Adepts. He was attacking his own barracks. So that does take away from your TPS. Uh, a little bit. Um, <laughs> a little bit of a sloppy pig here today. <laughs> but the worker count, 45 to 38. No third base yet for either side, but Pig's production is on point. He's got the upgrades on the way. Plus one and a Twilight Council finishing up for Guitar Cheese. He has a few more probes, so it's not down and out yet. The very, very fragile Warp Prism. If he if he loses his shields, all it will take is a light breeze, and this Warp Prism is down for the count. The Immortal's coming out. You gotta be very, you gotta be so careful. Oh my God, don't stress me out right now. Okay, going into the main. He's doing whatever he can. He needs to be very efficient because he needs to buy time for his infrastructure. Oh, pig. He clicked up to the main base. No! Oh! Ah, no! Ah, ah. <clears throat> Everybody calm down. Not even close, baby. Well, unfortunately, he doesn't have a starport in his main base or at all. Otherwise, this Viking would really help out. But unfortunately, pig has been supply blocked for a while. Well, intensely microing to chase down this single prism. Oh, he's going to try to run the needle. Thread the needle. Run the needle. You can't run needles. That doesn't make any sense. But it is... I mean, he's doing a good job of keeping these units contained. He's containing them by being contained. Is he the containee or the container? I don't... Okay, he's going to try to run it. He's going to try to run the blockade. And he will because he actually just... He could have just done that in the first place. But here come the Marines. He saw it. And there goes the war prison of Wait, no! <laughs> Oh, the appropriate response. And now Pig... Has almost total map control. He has a lot of bio, but he doesn't really have any medevacs, and there is going to be plus one engraved. So Guitar Cheese's army and third base are not nothing here. Pig killing that War Prism was big, but it's not a game winner, not yet. Especially if Guitar Cheese is able to mine from this base, even though he doesn't have that many probes. The main bases are starting to dry up. We got three patches over here. We got four patches over there. This could still go absolutely either way. And we're four to four. Next win is the entire ball game. All right. Or whatever they call a cricket game to make an Australian reference or a rugby match. I guess. Whatever. Doesn't matter. It's a best of nine. We're tied up four to four. The supply is almost dead even. I would put the, arm, the direct army here a little bit in favor of guitar cheese, but only if the tanks aren't sieged. Now we got some adepts over here. If the tanks are seats, this gets very scary. He needs to shade out. Oh, that positioning. The tanks are just crushing through, but the immortals have a lot of stopping power. He needs to warp in another round. If he loses his front line, where did the medevacs go? There's no energy left. He doesn't have anything to keep his marines and marauders intact. The tanks are falling, but so are the immortals. It looks like Katarchi's not quite enough to hold on. He's down in supply. How many gateways does he have? We're only looking at six gates and a single robo of production. So Pig will take a 30 supply lead. And that was just enough. If he had shaded earlier, if he had been a little bit better positioned, that could have gone the other way. But just enough for Pig to hold on and keep several of his tanks alive. 
It is looking like it's going in the Australian direction right now. It's going down under for Guitar Cheese as his supply is quite low, but he's going to have Blink. He's going to have a lot of micro bow units and a lot of stopping power. And, and Pig really doesn't, still doesn't really have the A move fuck you unit count that he could be looking for. We do have a Liberator to the back. Where is the Mothership Core? It's at the front. He needs to worry about this direct attack. This Observer going to be in position. Oh, this siege up is real dicey. And if he... Oh, he sees the army. The scan. Guitar Cheese can't move too far out of position. Pig moves forward. He has vision. He killed a few more probes. The worker count 49 to 43 in Terran favor. There is no war prism. There's nothing to tie this army back at home. He can just keep moving forward. And there are still two tanks here. Does he see it? The Liberator is going to help as well. Double overcharge is doing its best. He's got a guardian shield. I think it's do or die time. That's a lot of medevacs. But here comes Guitar Cheese. The last stand. Down goes the tank. A second one as well. The Liberator just barely going to be removed from the sky. Another round of reinforcements. The Guardian Shield is helping out a lot. He's got the 1-1 against the 1-1 on the deck. Pig will be pushed back. Guitar Cheese holds on to his Immortals and his sentries. He drives back the tanks and the Liberator. But it's still all Pig all the time, as there's no counterattack damage coming out. He's not building any probes. He's desperately warping in every single unit he can, and he has no money to do anything else. Pig is laying his foot on the gas, and it looks like Guitar Cheese is about burnt out of this race. Another drop in the side. A former auto drop. I think he just loaded up whatever he could get a hold of. Actually, that was a drop into the main. This is going to get very difficult for Guitar Cheese to deal with. He can't split all his units away, or he leaves his third base exposed. He's losing probes at the front. He's losing probes in the main. Down goes the Mothership Core. The one, two, three coming in. He's stimming to the front in just a second. I'm sure he will. Don't worry about it. This drop was cleared up, but the attack right up the gut. The sieged up Liberators and even a tank. Guitar Cheese getting pulled every single way. The drop's actually coming back in. He didn't clear them up. There's nothing that can be cleared anymore. He has a big army, but it's caught between everything. He's being choked out right now as Pig is at 152 supply. Whereas Guitar Cheese is dropping down to 71. He shades through the Liberation Zones. He'll kill the Liberators, but the main base is gone. The net has been gutted. The third base has lost its shields and all its probes, and he's moving across the map with everything he's got, but I don't think it's going to be enough. It is now zero probes. I repeat, zero. That's possibly the least amount of probes that one could ever have 12 less than he started with he's coming across the map with one two adapts but those are liberators i don't even think he has enough to kill them there's two one on the ground as guitar cheese's last stand commences gg wp and pig takes it home five to four by that much and he will be crowned the king of random. Hail to the king. I don't remember exactly who played what matchups. But thank you to Sionic Aftermath for putting on these games. Thank you to the players for playing. Thank you to Pig for the replay pack. If this is on YouTube, you can look for all the links below. Hopefully you enjoyed my cast. I had a lot of fun with it. It was a good series. It was a great series. And thank you guys for watching. This isn't the end of the stream, by the way, but I enjoyed it.